right, welcome back to our second webinar of a three-part series on developing pro forma financial projections. In this webinar, we're going to be diving into developing pro forma cash flow statements. The first webinar, we dove into developing pro forma income statements, and we're going to be building the cash flow off of what we established last time in the previous webinar. In this webinar right now, it's just myself and Richard. Um, so Richard, feel free to hop in and ask questions whenever you like, or just sit back and relax, either one. Okay. Right on. So um, what we have here is some of the major things we're going to be covering today. So setting up a cash flow statement, investment activities, which is just one of the different um, compartments of it, introducing net income, sales tax collected, paid and payable, and payment of dividends. So before we dive like right into this, the income statement is pretty linear in that you're breaking down the revenue you're bringing in as a business, operating expenses, net income. So we have that established. So everything we do in this cash flow statement is going to be based on that. The process in developing pro forma financial projections is income statement first, then your cash flow statement, and then shifting over to balance sheet last. Mm -hmm. So in a nutshell, the cash flow statement is the inflow and outflow of cash in the actual business account, essentially. So here is a pretty standard setup for a monthly cash flow uh, projection. So we've got our different months here. We've got opening cash balance up here, uh, operating activities, so net income, sales tax, and non-working capital, so sales tax, income taxes, and investment activities. So if the owner's putting in any money, inflow of business loans, outflow of purchasing PPE, so property plant equipment, and the principal repayment of debt. It also has payment of dividends down here. So this is like a clean slate for cash flow projections. This is our first move, okay? So to make it simple, the owner is investing $20,000 into the business in the first month. So you'll see it started off at zero, and by the end of the month, they're at $20,000. Now, it's not complete, this is just the first move. Next up, the bank said, all right, we're going to give you a $50,000 loan. So you can see the inflow of that. So you have a nice business loan in there. Next up, this is just breaking down the amortization calculator, like the amortization schedule, essentially. So it was a $50,000 loan, six-year term at a 9% interest rate. And you can see in year one, interest is the highest. Every year, interest goes down. In year one, principal is the lowest, and it goes up every year. The banks like to take their interest at the beginning. So a monthly payment of 901.28, but what you'll see in here is we're more focused on how much interest and how much principal is being paid out each month. This right here is a breakdown of just showing everyone how the actual principal gets repaid. So in the first month, we have the first payment of principal, which is down in this column. It's $526 and you're gonna see every single month more principal gets taken out. And that continues through the whole 72 months of the loan. So the actual calculation is this cell equals the sum of down here and the negative sum of that because it's coming out of the account. And on the income statement that we already established, the interest here at 375, it's coming out of there. So I know it sounds weird because in business, it's like, well, all I'm doing is making a payment of 901 each month. True. But in financials, we need to show interest coming out from under EBITDA in the net income. And in cash flow, the principal portion of the loan comes out. There we have it. Again, this is just showing that flow of capital going through there. Purchase a PPE. So with that, you know, the $20,000 coming in from personal investment, the business loan of 50K coming in. There's also a purchase of property plant equipment. So let's say a piece of equipment for $25,000 in the first month. So we're showing that come out of the account because that's a purchase. And now we're diving into net income. So it's pretty simple. Once you have your income statements established, you are simply saying net income equals the sum of net income. And for everyone, for anyone else, it's your net earnings. It's really your take home at the end of the day. So if you can imagine a business each month, when you're thinking of the inflow and outflow of capital, it makes sense from a cash flow perspective to say, Okay, so this is the leftover money that's coming to the account that's left over. That's why we're introducing net income next. As you can see, there is some seasonality in the business. So this is the exact same, you know, 
line that you would see in year one in the income statement. Okay. So it's the, literally the exact same thing. Next up, we're going to look at sales tax collected. So this equals the sum of year one, IS5, D7, O5. In short, all this is saying is our, our sales tax rate, so it depends on where you are in the world, what province you're in, what state you're in, what country you're in. Currently, we're going at 5% for GST, goods and service tax, but call it what you like. It's the sales tax that's closest to you that you should charge out on. So we're saying 5% of all revenue is going to be collected each month. Um, and you know it's this business's responsibility to collect that. As you can see, that's been pulled right across. So, you know, as revenue goes up, well, this isn't revenue, it's net income, but it's a, a byproduct of, of revenue. Uh, as you can see, though, as, you know, net income goes up, as revenue goes up, the sales tax collected increases each month. So what we're basically saying is every month, that's what's coming in and that's what the business is keeping. But of course, it's the business's responsibility to pay some of that back. For sales tax paid, we're saying, okay, the business is actually paying out taxes on some of its purchases. So what that is, is the first line item here was from materials. The next one is operating expenses. So that wouldn't include, you know, employee wages. You know, they're not paying sales tax on that, but on material that they're paying for, you know, they're paying for sales tax and they're also paying for it on a lot of the operating expenses. As you can see, that money is coming out of the account each month. Okay, so on one end, they're doing their job, they're collecting the tax. And on the other side, in, you know, all their materials and operating expenses, you know, they're paying out tax at the same time. Now, what is payable at the end of the day? Now, this depends on where you're at, you know, across Canada, for example, it's, you know, you collect sales tax, okay, then you pay out what you pay out. And then the government says, whatever is left in the middle of that, that's what's owed to us. So we'll let you get away. You, you know, you paid for your taxes already in different operating expenses and materials, but whatever was in between what you collected and what you already paid, you owe that to us. So to make it simple each month, we're going to show that that's being repaid. And as you can see, it's the difference between these two numbers right here is being repaid each month. Income tax is payable. So this is showing, this is also a, a product of the income statement. This is the income taxes um, that's being paid out um, every single month before paying out the company's dividends, monthly dividends. Okay, that's also coming out of the account. Now, payment of dividends. The number one rule we need to look at when paying out dividends is whatever net income is for a year, you can't pay out a penny more than that. Okay, so you can only pay out whatever your net income was. You can also pay out no dividends. You don't have to pay out dividends. You know, if you think about large companies out there, some of them are growth stocks and they just say, we don't pay dividends. We just take all of our cash and reinvest it, right? Or you can pay out a little dividend. You just, the number one rule is you cannot pay out more than you actually collect in net income that you have left over. So in this one, what we did is in the first year, we paid out exactly what net income was. So to a T for the year, $82,735. Same amount as net income. Now, what we're doing here is to show your monthly cash flow. We're just we're just calculating it. So in short, it's the sum of all this here. So it's net income, sales tax collected, sales tax paid, sales tax payable, income tax is payable, owner's investment, inflow business loan, you know, principal repayments, purchase of PPE, dividends you're paying out. That's your cash flow on a monthly basis. Now we're doing like monthly cash flow, right? So important thing to note is what you take whatever's at the beginning of the month, you add whatever your cash flow was for the month, and that's your clo closing cash balance for the month. Then what you'll notice here is when it strikes midnight and it's, you know, the next month, whatever it's at immediately transfers directly over to the next month and it starts fresh again, right? One of the most important things to look at when you're, you know, reviewing cash flow is you can never have a negative closing cash balance. Okay, so the business ceases to exist if it has a negative cash balance. So down here, this closing cash balance always has to be at least zero, ideally at least $1, um, you know, as much as possible. It's really good to have nice cash balance. But most important, the actual rule is that it can never, you know, be less than zero, essentially. This is just showing essentially that, you know, this equals this, right? Whatever it was the previous month at the last minute, boom, it transfers over to the next month. Now here we're just looking at a three year, right? So all we did is 
I built out, you know, the monthly um, cash flow statements for year two, for year three, and the totals at the end of each year we just took and, you know, included here. So it's the same concept, right? When it's happy new year and it goes to next year, whether it's on December 31st or your year end is, you know, in June or March, it always transfers over. So whatever your closing cash balance was at the end of one year, it's that's exactly what it is going into the next year. As you can see in year two and three, for investment activities, there was no extra capital, you know, included in for owner's investment, you know, for any business loans, uh, any purchase of other equipment. It's just simply repaying the principal payments. You can also see that if you look at the net income, instead of it being the full amount of $164,891, it's a portion of that. It's $115,424. You know, year three, $278,063, and it's $194,000. Six hundred forty-four dollars. So, um, yeah, you just you don't need to be paying out the full amount of net income. You don't even need to be paying out any. The main thing is that you just can't pay more than what you had in net income. Kept it nice and simple today. That's the whole webinar. Um, thank you so much for joining everyone. And uh, in next week, we're going to be diving into balance sheets. So it's going to be the last of this three-part series, and we're going to be balancing a balance sheet in that next one. We hope you can all join. And thank you so much. Feel free to reach out if you have any questions.